Hey, what's up guys, Fish Tank Mike here. Today we're finally getting started on the three takes. Over here we already got one set up. This is the one that we're gonna be doing today. And we're gonna go through the whole setup of it. The aquascape, we're gonna get the fish in it. We're gonna do everything with this tank today. So I had a big choice to make. It was, do we take all of these down at the same time, line up all three of the new bear tanks, and then just do all three of them, you know, over the course of a week or whatever. And I decided to just start with this one right here because we need a home for these fish before we remove this tank. And I will say, this tank looks a heck of a lot better now that we can actually see it. Remember, it, the, the Rotala was growing out all over the top of it and this tank was just always the darkness. We could never see into it. And I actually think it looks pretty good. Uh, despite all of its problems and whatnot, now that we don't have that issue anymore. So we're gonna be moving the Kurai Tetras from this tank into the new tank because if you're a member, you saw the members video I put out, we have a bunch of fish over in the current Serene tank that are basically in QT. Those fish that are over there in the current Serene tank are gonna end up in the Jurassic Park angelfish tank as kind of like the dither fish to kind of break it up in here and it'll be nice to have another smaller fish that schools in here. I think they're gonna go along with the angels really good and that's all I'm gonna say about that. So that's essentially what's happening today. We have this whole mess over here getting ready to pull everything out of here so we can reuse the substrate in this tank for the tank that's gonna live here. And I think with that, we'll just go ahead and start working on this new tank today. We don't have any equipment over here. I just set this thing up a few days ago and it's been just hanging out looking really cool. I'm excited that these tanks are a little bit taller so I won't have to bend over when I'm doing my filming and whatnot. And it's just gonna be a lot cooler too for people that come into the fish room besides myself that wanna look at the tanks because I mean, I'm not a super tall guy or anything. I'm not even six feet tall, but when people come over that are, you know, six foot tall or whatever, it's kind of tough to see the tanks. They don't jump out at you right away. So I think by having these up a little bit higher, it's just gonna enhance the overall experience down here. So I'm looking forward to that. And for those of you that don't know, these are water box aquariums. These are the 36 by 20 inch tanks. So I think we're looking at around 50 gallons on these. So we're getting 10 more gallons of water, which will be nice. And I think with these dimensions, we get a little bit more front to back, which is always good for aquascaping. We got our other two stands over here. And once you set up one of these things, it becomes super easy. You just bang them all out. And uh, we're very thankful to have Waterbox as a sponsor of the channel, guys. So if you're looking for a new rimless tank, guys, and a stand that is super clean, everything's matched up perfectly, the exact dimensions, I know that can be kind of a pet peeve of people when they, you know, they're just putting their tank on whatever and it doesn't line up right. This is a super good option for anybody who's into aquariums. Freshwater, saltwater, they have special saltwater tanks, of course, if you happen to be a saltwater person watching this. And yeah, go check them out. I'll have a link in the description, as always, with all the other things that we're gonna be doing today. Let's get rolling here with the substrate, guys. Remember, whenever you're doing a new tank, you wanna check and make sure that everything's level, front to back, left to right, so that you don't have to make any big major changes once you get some water in it. So everything's level here, and we're adding in the substrate. We're using UN Contra Soil. We're gonna be using the black variety, and I believe we're using mostly the fine grain size here. We might be having to mix and match a little bit, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference if we have to do that. So we're just gonna start by piling this in I don't have a ton of it, so we have to make use with what we got here. Um, but basically, we don't need a ton of substrate in this tank. For the aquascape, I'm thinking about we shouldn't need to have any big mounds or anything. So for the majority of the hardscape guys, we're gonna be using two pieces of Congo wood. And honestly, I'd never really heard of this wood. There's so many different types out there, right? I just saw it at the fish store and I thought it looked really cool. It had a ton of character and I think we're gonna roll with it. So this stuff is, it has the coloration of spider wood, but it has a lot more character to it and it, it feels like it's pretty dense. I don't know if it's gonna float, but I'm just assuming that it will. Um, and so what we're gonna do is place these two pieces where we want them and and then we're gonna grab some lava rock, which is gonna be the other component of the hardscape, and we're eventually gonna super glue some of those pieces of lava rock to the wood to hopefully hold it down once we fill it up. Thank you. 
Fast forward to present time and we have both of our pieces of wood in the exact spot we want. We got them super glued to some lava rocks, so just in case they float, which I think they will, they won't, which is always a plus. And we've wet the aquarium down, gotten the substrate nice and moist, because we're about to plant. So let's talk about what we're gonna be doing in that regard, guys. So over here, we have a ton of plants. We have some tissue hair grass that we got from the fish store the other day, and then we have a ton of stuff from Boost Plant. All right, guys, I'm shooting this in the past. Uh, I think I'm confused. We haven't set up any of the tanks. These came early is what I'm trying to say. So this is a shipment from Boost Plant. We have a bunch of stuff that we're gonna be using on the tanks that we're setting up and probably this one that we're setting up right now, whichever, <laughs> whichever tank it is. So here we have a big bag of moss, Christmas moss. Okay, we also have the mini Christmas moss in here somewhere. These are mats of mini Pelia. So those are pretty much, you guys have seen this. This is the mini Christmas moss on wire mesh or the wire mat, I should say. So we have a handful of these, a bunch. Let's get through here. Ooh, did we get a pin? Yeah, we got a pin, all right. Um, yeah, more of that. More of the wire mats of the mini Pelia. This is gonna be really good to super glue on stuff and then we also have a few bags of dwarf hair grass not in tissue culture which is interesting i haven't tried this stuff uh typically when you go straight to the farm or at least for me when i tried to get dwarf hair grass it always ends up being some weird kind of not dwarf hair grass so i'm thinking this is going to be the real deal because it's from boost plant and while we okay so a few more bags of that what are we doing okay so because this is early, again, we haven't, we're still setting up tanks over there. The room's a mess, so we're not gonna show that. Uh, we have these little mini greenhouses, like we have over here. You guys are familiar with all this. This is, you know, what I've been doing for a while, but we just got some new, smaller ones in that I wanted to dedicate for the moss. Um, these ones kind of suck because they don't have a good handle. I have to pinch between this and it's a little precarious, but uh, I will put links for these as well as the plants. Of course, the boost plants will be down there. We have coupons too, guys, down there to save yourself some money if you need some new plants. Um, but these things are awesome. It's a great way we can just set these mats down in here. We can take the big clumps of moss and put them in here, and it's really gonna help preserve it for a longer period of time, right? Because who knows when we're gonna set up these tanks over here. Hopefully in the next couple of days, but if we had to leave this stuff in here for let's say a month, it would be A-OK. -okay. We just have to make sure it has a light source and that's why we have the dedicated spot over there. So big thanks to Boost Plant, of course, for providing most of the plants here today in this build, or at least the probably the most important ones. So here's where we stand, guys. We have all the plants in that I think I wanna put in initially. This isn't gonna be the final list. We will come back to this tank, but based on the fact that the wood is gonna fuzz up, you know, in the first few weeks of it being set up, I don't wanna completely cover these things with moss yet. We have the dwarf hair grass mini in the front, and then we have some regular dwarf hair grass that kind of flanks behind it and is closer to those middle pieces and hopefully that ends up looking pretty good. Once they carpet and do their thing, I think that they'll look nice when they blend together. I left kind of an open area here because I'm debating whether or not I wanna put in a path. That's something that we can also do at a later time, no big deal. Same thing goes for these big wood pieces. We obviously could do a lot of cool stuff with this. I'm thinking Hydro Pinnitophyta, really bright red, 
plants growing up off of that. I think that would look really cool. We could also do uh, obviously just more moss or we could do Anubias, things like that. So now I think we're gonna go ahead and fill up the tank guys, but we need to talk about the equipment because we don't have any yet. We have the light on here, that's pretty much all we have. This is an ONF Flat One LED. This is the same light that was on the tank that was right here initially, and we're gonna keep it because we can just stay consistent. We have another one that's gonna be on one of these tanks, and even this aquarium is gonna have the same light, but we're just gonna hang it, kinda similar to how we have the Kessel, but they'll all match. For filtration, we're just gonna swap this Awaza canister filter over here once we get the fish out. So we'll do that in a second, but guys, you know we use Awaza canister filters here in the fish room. This is the Filtosmart 300 Thermo, so it has the built-in heater, which is awesome. You don't have to put a heater in your tank, take up visual space. That's one of the main reasons why I love these filters, guys. And of course, there's a link in the description where you can check out all of Awaza's different canisters. There's the 200 over here, if you're looking for a little less filtration. And then there's, of course, the Biomaster series, like what we have over on the big tank, just in case you need a little bit more filtration because you happen to have a really big tank. Filtration is complete guys. We move that Awaza filter over and everything's looking pretty good because we're adding fish today We're gonna dump in a bunch of turbo start to make sure that everything is good in our system And we did have to clean out our filter quite a bit So before we put in a bunch of fish in here We just want to double check and make sure everything's gonna be safe. I think everything's gonna be fine Let's just make this thing Super cloudy with bacteria. We'll pour in a little bit back here by the filter input and that should be good. There's a few more fish that we have to move, guys. Unfortunately, these ones that are still in here are the ones that are really hard to get. You know what I'm talking about. So I think we're gonna pair putting those in with the slow destruction of this tank or the picking apart of everything. That way we make sure we get everybody and we don't have to worry about fish being left behind. These guys are obviously kind of freaking out, shoaling up together, following each other around like a racetrack. Uh, big change from what they're used to. I mean, they've been in this tank for a long time, so they will probably be a little freaked out here for a while, but they'll get over it. I think they're gonna really love this tank at the end of the day. So with that said, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. We don't wanna take too much more of your time here. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you're excited for this scape and the evolution of it. We will be in here pretty soon with some changes to it, and hopefully we can turn it into the awesome aquarium that I know it's gonna end up being. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.